Okay, welcome everyone who are on Facebook and on Zoom. Uh, if, uh, we will get started in approximately one minute for Women's Bible Study. More and more people are joining, I see. Welcome, Pastor. Welcome, Keisha and Pamela. Hi, Chi-Chi. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. All right, we've got about 30 seconds and we'll go ahead and get started. We won't be long tonight, ladies, um, because as you guys know, with the last Bible study of the series, we, it's usually very short to give you guys time to um, ask questions, to talk about what you've learned and to go over any material that we've had for the for whatever series we were studying. So we will not be long tonight. Okay. And so if you are on Facebook, um, if you're on Facebook, if you have questions or comments, go ahead and put it in the chat and I will try to get to those questions and comments. All right, all right, all right. Good evening, everyone. And welcome to the last women's Bible study of the year the last women's Bible study of the year. Um, wanna welcome you. Uh, we are live on Facebook. Join us on Zoom if you can. Uh, welcome Louise. Um, and so we're gonna go ahead and get started. First we'll do announcements and then we'll open up in prayer. The only announcement that I have um, is that we please remember that we have New Year's Eve service open to anyone and everyone. You do not have to be a member, but you do have to be vaccinated if you're going to be coming into the sanctuary. So that is New Year's Eve service on December the 31st. I wanna say 6.30, am I right, Cindy? Yes. Okay, 6.30 p.m. Um, it will not be an, a long service. Uh, so do try to join us on December the 31st at 6.30, right at St. John AME Church. Not sure if it will be, uh, Jamal, do you know if it will be live streamed? No, I don't, no, I don't think so. Uh, because okay. Okay. So, um, so join us in the sanctuary at St. John um, and bring in the new year right. But it, um, will be, it will be live on Zoom. So it, it will be, be live on Zoom? Yes. Okay. Just not Facebook. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Hi, uh, Sister Marie, Sister Clarice. Welcome. Um, the uh, nice. other one, I, I don't have any other announcements unless does anyone at all have any other announcements? Oh, Keisha's birthday is Friday. Happy birthday, Keisha. Happy birthday, Keisha. Happy birthday. <laughs> oh, thank you. Happy yes, birthday. Yes. <laughs> and Jamal's birthday is tomorrow. Oh, oh, happy oh, birthday to you. Happy birthday. There you go. Happy birthday, Jamal. <laughs> Thank you. All these Christmas babies. All yeah. these Christmas babies. Okay. Right, girl. Yes. Uh, are we doing anything Christmas Eve or Christmas Day at the church? We are not doing anything. There's nothing planned for Christmas Eve. But of course, um, no, nothing. Nothing for Christmas Eve, nothing for Christmas Day. Uh, but of course, we have Sunday service. Right. Okay. I just was wondering. I hadn't, hadn't heard right. anything. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I'll you Sunday, Kathy. What? <laughs> Where Kathy go? She was here. Was Kathy here? Okay. Okay. Let's open up in prayer, ladies. Father God, we come before you today just thanking you, Lord, for the opportunity to learn and to grow and to, to just read your word and to, to know what your will is for our lives. We thank you, Lord, because this opportunity may not come again. So Father God, we ask for your blessings on this particular opportunity. We ask for your blessings and we ask that you uh, help us to open up our hearts and our minds to receive whatever it is that you have for us. We thank you for the opportunity to have Bible study, to gather together, to share, to learn, and to grow. We pray that an extra blessing on those who could not attend Bible study tonight but wanted to. We ask a blessing on those whose birthdays are coming up. We ask a special blessing on the women who have grown through this Bible study this year, Lord God. 
listening and learning and reading your word. We pray, Father God, that you are pleased with what we do, how we speak, and how we uh, gather together to worship your holy name. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Welcome, Sally. Okay, ladies, let's get started. Like I said, we will not be long tonight. Um, We're going to end uh, for the last class uh, talking about holiness. It's only about 20 minutes tonight, and then we'll just open it up for any comments that you ladies have tonight. Do want to make sure that you guys know that tonight will be my last night teaching women's Bible study. Next year, as some of you know, I will be going back into seminary to finish the classes that I did not do to get my master's degree. So I will be going going back to school. So I'm laying some things aside just for a while. And so um, Pastor Locke will make an announcement of how women's Bible study will resume. This is important. So don't worry, this women's Bible study is not going away. Bible study is not going away. (laughs) Don't get happy. But we know that it is so needed for our growth as women, as holy women, as holy women. So um, Pastor Locke will, I'm sure, um, make some arrangements for what, uh, when that time comes um, in 2022 for Women's Bible Study. And I pray that she will allow me to come back when I'm done with school to continue. Of course. To <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Amen. Thank you. Okay. I would like to. I would like to say, um, Reverend Cheryl, you had made this journey amazing for all of us. And I thank God for the journey and the, I, I thank God for the, the um, what you have done for us. You have led us in, in a way that if we didn't have you, we wouldn't be able to know which direction to go, but you have gave us purpose. You have gave us direction. And I'm just saying, I love you for what you have given me. Thank you. Amen. It's, 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 it's been, a, it's been an amazing journey. Thank you so it's, much, Chi Chi. Yes. And cool. Yes. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ladies, so much. That means a lot. That means so much yes, to me. You, have, you guys, you have given us a foundation to where we just want more. Mm, That's right. Yeah. Excellent. Then I have, I have done my job. Yes, <laughs> yes you have. Yes, you have. <laughs> That's so good to hear. Thank you so much. That makes me feel good. Um, so, and I'm, and I'm honored that God allowed, uh, that God chose me to be used to minister to you women but like I say a lot you guys minister to me as I minister to you so and I've grown as you ladies have grown so it is it is such an honor and I've just fallen in love with all of you yeah I've just fallen in love with you guys so anyway back to bible study thank you so much I really appreciate really appreciate that yes and as you and as you partake your journey we pray that God just cover you and bless you. Amen. And whatever he has in store for you, we love it. Amen. Amen. Thank you. All Thank right. you so Chi-Chi's, much. Chi-Chi's going to conduct Bible study. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but, but you know what? That's what, she bring, that's what she brings out of me. I know she does. She does. Yes. <laughs> okay, enough really about running... I really want to get emotional, but I'm gonna keep it in check. (laughs) Enough about Reverend Cheryl. Let's talk about the Lord. (laughs) Okay, Okay. Okay. so we've been talking about holiness. We've been talking about um, what it is and why we need it and why God requires it. Why God requires it. So when we are talking about holiness, going back to that definition, when we talk about holiness, Um, we must remember uh, a good point that we keep saying, sin separates us from God. Always remember that when sin is in the picture, when you're in sin, when you're committing sin, the more you do it, 
the more you're separated from God. Holiness sets us apart for God. Okay? So sin separates us from God. Holiness sets us apart unto God. So keep in mind, whenever I'm in sin, whenever I'm um, in, 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 in a space of jealousy and hatred and anger mm. and viciousness and gossip and fornication, adultery, whenever I'm in that sin mode, I'm being separated from God. Yes. It's harder to hear God. Mm -hmm. It's harder to listen to God. It's hard to go to God mm. because that sin separates us and, and puts us in a mold of nothing that's godly, nothing that's holy. That's why um, God talks so much about sinfulness, about sin, about forgiveness, about repentance. Yeah. That's why. God just doesn't want to punish us all the time. That's, that's not what God is trying to do. God is trying to keep us from sin so that we're not separated from his glory and from his blessings. And you've heard me say before that the more you're into sin and the more you continue in sin, the less you can hear God. Right. That is very, very true, okay? You've got, you guys have heard me give the example, okay? Whenever you're sinning, okay? You can, you can, sometimes you can hear God, you know, saying, you know, repent. This is not right. This is not holy. Repent. And then you keep doing it. And God is telling you, you need to stop it. Come back to me. We're getting separated. You're not hearing me. And then the more you sin, Still can't hear his voice. And his voice just kept, keeps getting lower and lower until you can't hear God anymore. Because all of that sin is just mess all over your life in every area of, of your life. And that's why God is so serious about that separation. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. Okay, so when we talk about holiness, we're t and, and we've been talking about sin for several weeks now, that's why you may be asking, well, we're talking about holiness. Why are we talking so much about sin? Mm -hmm. Because sin separates us from God. Holiness sets us apart unto God. They're both different, separate, but we must understand the two in order to get to where we want to go, which is that holiness. So, um, got a couple of scriptures. I'm not going to make you guys go through all the, Bi the Bible today, but there are two scriptures I'm going to have you go to today. Like I said, we're not going to be long tonight. Um, the scripture, and you can write them down, but you don't need to go to them. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says, Follow peace with all men and holiness, which no man can, uh, without which no man can see the Lord. So again, this is emphasizing that we must forge ahead in uh, attaining holiness, holiness. And again, well, like we talked before, holiness is not what you wear, what you're wearing. Mm -hmm. It's not the fact of you, you can't wear makeup, can't wear makeup. You know, we're getting holiness twisted, okay? Um, when we talk about holiness in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 34, it says the totality uh, of man is to be set apart. Holiness set apart from the world, set apart from the sinfulness of the world, set apart from what the world deems of, of what success is, what greatness is, what life should be like. You're set apart for the purposes of God. And uh, back to the scripture, it says to be set apart, both soul, 
spirit and body. So everything that covers your life, which is your soul, your spirit, and your body, all of it, all three, must be set aside for holiness. Okay? Yes. What was the Hebrew? Um, Hebrews chapter chapter 12, verse 14. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the, the scriptures also tell us that the mind and the body of the, of the Christian are to be offered as a living sacrifice to God, okay? And this is a biblical concept of, of um, not only Christianity, but of holiness, okay? Setting, uh, allowing your body and your mind to be offered as a living sacrifice, meaning everything that you do with your body, okay? You, the things you do with your mind, it's a, make it a living sacrifice to God, your thoughts, okay? Um, when we think of gluttony, okay? And that is a sin. We are thinking we are not allowing our bodies to be a living sacrifice, okay? When we're in gluttony in terms of overeating, in terms of just being pigs, just eating in everything and anything we see all the time, okay, consciously, okay? We need to understand that we are offering just our bodies. Our bodies are housing what? What does our bodies house? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. So we must take care of our bodies because it's housing something very precious, very precious. So um, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and 17 says, holiness, and we talked about this, holiness is separateness, morally speaking, from the elements of the world. Okay, holiness is being separate from the things that the world honors and treasures and looks up to, okay? We're in the world, we must live in the world, but we don't have to be of the world, right? Mm -hmm. And if we're gonna be that light of the world, then we, we, got, we have to be something different. We have to look different, act different, speak differently. Or nobody's going to think you're different. <laughs> nobody's going to think that you come from a righteous and holy God that requires you to be holy. Right? Mm -hmm. So we're just going to, before we finish this, we're going to look at two scriptures. And we're going to look at some examples of uh, individuals in the Bible that came before a holy God. And what we talked about is we know our, our need for holiness when we see in full our sinfulness. When we see our sinfulness, we start to understand our need for holiness, okay? And we'll understand it more when we look at these two examples. Okay. There's a need for holiness because number one, God requires it. God requires it. Um, and um, God states, be holy for I am holy. Okay. So I want us first to look at, let's go to Isaiah chapter six. Isaiah chapter six. Verses one through seven. Isaiah chapter six, verse one through seven. And I don't want the King James Version. Um, Pamela, what version of the Bible do you have? Uh, I've got the new King James. Okay. Uh, and Chi Chi, what version you have? I have the um, new, um, in the nat natural living transition. Hmm. Okay. I have, I have the new international version. I have two of them. NIV. Okay. Um, Pamela, can you read it for us from your version? Yes, ma'am. Just give me one moment. I'm getting there. Absolutely. We're looking at um, 
Isaiah chapter six. six. And uh, let's go through. I want you to read it slowly. Okay. I want you to read it slowly. And while you're doing that, I'm going to look and see if we have any comments on Facebook right now. Okay. We've got several people on Facebook. Hi, Mecca. Brandy. I see you guys on Facebook. Thank you. Praise God for you guys. Regina, hello. Good evening. Merry Christmas to you. Uh, Reverend Ebony, good evening. So we've got several ladies on Facebook. Um, okay, so Pamela's going to be reading Isaiah chapter 6. Uh, and I want you to read all the way from verse 1 through 7. 1 through 7. Okay. Now it came to pass in the days of Ahaz, A-H-A-Z, I believe that's how it's pronounced, the exactly. son of Jotham. No, where are you reading? Isaiah, oh, that's six. You want seven. I mean, uh, you no, want, I, I was reading I want six. six. Yeah, Chapter I was reading six. seven. You want six. I'm sorry. Wait a yes, minute. There okay. we go. I got it. Okay. In the year that King Uzzah, is that how you pronounce it? Yes, you're good. That's, Die, it. That's it. I saw the Lord sitting on the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Seraphim. Each one had six wings, with two uh, he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. Mm. And one cried to, to another and said, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door were shaken by the voice of him who cried out and the house was filled with smoke. So I said, woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in, him, in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Perfect version. What I want you ladies to see here is that we see God in all of his glory, in all of his glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. I mean, his, his glory is so filling that even in a room, you can't even see a speck of dust. It covers every corner, every inch, every angle. It's just everywhere. It's full. It's unexplainable in terms of the, 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 the way God's glory, the way God's presence is in this, in this uh, scripture here. And so when we know that and when we think about the fullness and the glory of God, just how immaculate and gloriful and, 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 and huge God is and how powerful God, the presence of God is in, 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 in front of you. When God is with you, that presence is so powerful and you think about it. And when you think about it, when you think about that glory and how holy God is, it makes you think, wow, look at how, how holy God is and look at how sinful I am. I can't even compare just an inch to the holiness of God. So the holiness of God and being in God's presence makes you think that, wow, 
I am full of sin, but I don't want to be like this. And so what we see here in Isaiah, he's confessing and, and, and not only letting himself know, but letting others know that he's a man of unclean lips. I have seen the king, he says, my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. I see God. I see how wonderful, powerful, big, immaculate God is. But yet I know that I am full of sin. But it goes on to say that when he's touched by the presence of God, when he when he starts to observe and to dwell in the holiness of God, his iniquity, it says, is taken away and his sin is purged. So in order for you to um, not only uh, understand and to, to be in the presence of God and to be and to start a journey of holiness that sin must be purged your lips must be touched okay does this make sense yes yes Do we understand what isaiah was speaking of here the greatness yes. of god's holiness and not even under, and not even um, wanting to be in God's presence because he was full of sin, knowing that to enjoy God's presence, that he needed to be touched by the hand of God. And it speaks to that in verse seven. It says, he touched my mouth and said, behold, this has touched your lips your iniquity is taken away. That's just one example. Another example. Um, let's go to Exodus. Let's go to Exodus chapter three. Exodus chapter three. And if I can, Pamela, have you read something again? Yes, ma'am. Exodus chapter three. Uh, and I know we've been in the New Testament most of this series. But where's Exodus in the New Testament or the Old Testament? Oh, Old Testament, oh. second book. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much. Exodus chapter three. Exodus chapter three. And we're going to start with, let me, uh, let me see, make sure I'm going to get all of it. Oh, wait a minute. Um, let's start at verse one. Let's start at verse one and let's read all the way to verse six, one through six. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, now Moses was tending the flock of the Jethro of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet for the place where you stand is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am God of your father, the God of Abraham, 
the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face for he was afraid to look upon God. Okay, hey, thank you so much, Pamela. Yet another example, when you come into the presence of God, you're coming into a place, a space, an energy that is holy, that is precious, that is full of, of perfection. And we always want to have the presence of God in our space, in our lives, uh, in our existence. And so that's why I beat so hard on separation from God. You don't ever want to be out of the presence of God. And in, when you're in sin, it separates you from God. The more you're in the presence of God, the more you're in sync with God, the more you can understand where you are in terms of that journey of holiness, okay? So what we see here in this scripture with Moses, um, uh, God is telling him, Moses, take your sandals off. You're standing on holy ground. You're in the presence of holiness. You're in the presence of, some, of, of perfection, of perfect, something that is bigger and stronger and mightier than you. So when you are in, when, when you are in the presence of God, it is so powerful. You can't deny it. It's a, it's a totally different feeling, a totally different experience and atmosphere than anything that you can um, ever know. You know when you're in the presence of God. You know when you're feeling that, when you feel that spirit. And so when we talk about holiness, we're talking about that journey of, become, of being set apart unto God, meaning we are being, um, we are being um, molded to become more like God, not a God, but having the personality of God, which is love, okay? loving, being loved, showing love, giving love. And so that journey to holiness is being set apart to serve God, to worship God, to be more like God, to love like God, and not the world. When you're not being set apart, in holiness, the only other option is to be set apart to serve the world, which is sinfulness, which is anger, which is jealousy, which is deceit, which is unforgiveness. So those are your choices. There's no in between. There's no on the fence. It's either the world or there's holiness. And so there's that, those are your choices. And so what we see here is another example of God um, showing, explaining that with him, uh, he is holy. In his presence, there is holiness. And so that's our goal. That's our uh, that's God's will, and that should be your will to be set apart unto holiness. Okay? Sin separates us from God. Holiness um, sets us apart unto God. Okay? Remember those two. Sin separates us. Holiness sets us apart unto God. Okay? So... Those are the only two examples that we have tonight. But the last thing that I want to, to bring up is that, okay, so what do we do? We talked about this last week. Well, what, what are some of the things that we do? So when we try to allow, um, uh, when we are trying to allow holiness to, to overtake our lives, to be, a, to be holy women of God set apart for God's purposes, um, 
we have to allow God to shine the light on the darkest parts of our lives. Whatever that dark part is, whatever you're going through that's not of God, allow God to shine some light on it. Well, how do we do that? How do we do that? I, I, you know, I can't stand it when people all oh, allow God to do this. Well, how do I do that? <laughs> Teach me how to do that. Well, here's how you do that. Well, you must, um, you must um, understand and know what your unconfessed sin is. You know when you're in sin. You, you, you ladies know the word of God. You know when you're in sin. Confess those sins. Ask for forgiveness. For, for forgiveness. Okay, because when you don't, that's um, keeping you from walking in the light. You're walking in darkness when you're walking in sin. And that's oh. keeping you from walking in the light. Okay, so confess, unconfessed sin. Okay, confess your sins to God and then receive God's forgiveness. Receive God's forgiveness and then rest in his forgiveness and move forward and move forward. One of the things we talked about, I don't know if it was last week or the week before for last, um, when we um, are, 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 are walking, okay? There are gonna be things that might get in our way and there might be a, 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 a rock as we're walking and we might trip over that rock. But then once we trip over that rock, we just get back up. We might be bruised, but we get back up and we keep walking. The rock didn't stop us. It was just a point in our life that we fell down. We messed up. Something got in our way. We didn't avoid it, but we got back up and we, we started walking again. Same way in your life. Things are going to get in your way. Things are going to um, make you stumble. You're going to allow things to make you stumble. But all God wants you to do is get back up, learn from that, learn to avoid that rock the next time, go a different route, go a different direction, go around it so that you don't trip over it. And so, of course, I'm using that rock as an analogy for sin. But understand that when you sin, there's a way to get out of it. And that's to confess it, receive forgiveness, get back up and walk back into righteousness and keep walking. And so that's what God wants us to do. And so turn to, um, um, to end this, I want you to turn to the 30th Psalm, the 30th Psalm. And I think who had that other translation? Um, I think it was, I think it was Sister Clarice. Yeah, I have the, the new Okay, can okay, you return to the 30th Psalm? And I want you to read it slowly. I want you to read it slowly. Just two minutes, let me find it. Okay. 30th Psalm and verse, verse, I want to say 11. Let me double check. Yes, verse 11. Verse 11, read. You turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothe me with joy, that my heart may sing your praises and not to be silent. Lord, my God, I will praise you forever. Okay, thank you so much. Basically what this scripture is telling us, though you may be sad, though you may be hurting, though you may have sinned, though you may have done something that was totally against what God told you to do, God can turn it around, but you must go to God. Um, you must um, allow God to change your heart. You must allow uh, and, and, and receive, this is important, 
receive God's forgiveness. Receive God's forgiveness so that he can turn, as the scripture said, turn your mourning into dancing. And he can take your, as the scripture says, take your sackcloth and off and clothe you with gladness. Okay. And so that's our series. That's all I have tonight for the last Bible study that I will be teaching for a while. Um, but that's all I have. So I want, as we do with at the end of every series, um, I come to you to get your comments on the series that we just um, went through, which was holiness. What, what are your comments, your thoughts? What did God reveal to you in this series? What changed you? What are you going to do differently? What have you learned? Um, what comments do you have? So the floor is open, ladies. I believe this was a great series that we needed because for me it was that I need to do more and God's been revealing to me and, and with my own studies that um, I I need to learn more than what I've been taught in my earlier years. Mm. So I'm uh, learning even, I think it was called sanctify and sanctification. That was sanctification. a new word. Mm -hmm. from uh never heard of that and then when you had to break it down so I even had to uh look it up to get a better understanding so learning that way to helped me a lot so Good. I thank you for teaching this excellent excellent okay anyone else Reverend Cheryl yes Pamela yeah, uh, at the very beginning, I think that was 11-3, uh, uh, the date. And um, one of the questions, one, one of the things that you said was that holiness is not legalism. Yeah, I like that. I like that yes. because that tells us that what you and you and you re reiterated that in this study that we don't have to look a certain way to be holy, uh, that we can wear makeup, I think, you know, in moderation, but right. we don't have to have a star on our forehead. And I'm not trying to uh, uh, offend anyone, but that's just an example that came to, my, came to mind. Uh, God wants us, to be who we are, but at the same time, keep our minds and spirits and souls and our bodies holy. Hmm. It doesn't matter what you wear, but I think there is a way to wear it, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it's not legalism. So I Ex like that. I like that. Exactly. Very good point, Pamela, because we have must understand that when we, um, as, as we grow in Christ, there's going to be a certain way that we want to dress. That's We're right. not going to want to reveal our, our body parts on the streets all the time. So as you become um, 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 more um, closer to God, as, you, as the Holy Spirit teaches you and guides you, okay? No, it's, holiness is not about what, how you dress. But as you become holy and you, and you journey in holiness and as you become a woman of God, there are certain things that when people look at you that they will be able to tell that you're a woman of God. And mm -hmm. part of that is how you adorn yourself. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Exactly. In, anyone else? For I me, I think that um, one thing that, that struck out in me is um, just, a, it's a mindset. You have to change your mindset um, that, you know, you are constantly working on bettering your life, 
and, you know, changing it so that you're honoring God. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Very good point and a very important point. You know, um, Reverend Shell, you know, before used to look at the priests as they are the ones who should be holy. I don't know why. But then after this lesson, series of lessons, holiness, we all should strive to be holy. Mm -hmm. And um, back home, we have a sect of Christians. And I think this is what they want to walk towards. Mm. After reading um, Moses, mm -hmm. there are churches you don't go in with shoes. Mm -hmm. Take your shoes off. Mm -hmm. Because they consider the church, in fact, they don't call it church. They call it mm. tabernacle. Mm. They the tabernacle as holy. Holy ground. Mm. Holy grounds, that's it. Holy mm -hmm. ground. Mm -hmm. So when you enter the tabernacle, when you enter the church, you have to take your shoes off. Mm. So um, with all that you've taught us now, I'm wondering, is that holy? Is what holy? The act of taking your shoes off and worshiping, worshiping God. Well, I guess they, they believe that worshiping God in holiness, just as when God told Moses to take his shoes off, he's in holy ground. They consider that place a holy ground. Mm -hmm. Worshiping God in holiness. Do you get what I'm trying to say? I, I do. Remember what we defined as holiness, though. The presence, Ho yeah. Right. Holiness is... The, who, what's, who wrote down the definition of holiness on that very first class? Who wrote down that definition? I, I think I did, Reverend Cheryl. Can you read that definition for I, us? I think, I think I did. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, to live a life to the moral precept of the Bible, but in contrast in the ways of the world. Read it is again. That, that it? Yes, that's it. Read it again. To live a life to the moral precepts, precepts of the Bible, but in contrast in the ways of the world. Okay. So to live a life. So we're living our life. So when we, when you, when you talk about taking your shoes off in the tabernacle, in the sanctuary, that might be an act of respect, an act of um, showing reverence to God's holy place, but it's not holiness. That's what I thought. Okay. And I want to add one thing with that, um, just adding to what you're saying. Um, it is the energy behind the action. Two people can do the exact same act, but your motivation, your energy behind it, you, uh, the reasoning behind it uh, could be totally different. And so mm -hmm. it is all your spirit, everything that you bring to that act that makes it holy, not just mm -hmm. the motion of it. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. Absolutely. Thank mm -hmm. you, Clarice. Thank you, Pamela. Any oh, other sure. comments? We've got a couple more minutes. Any other comments? Let me see if there's anything on Facebook. I think Any you other? said too, uh, Reverend Cheryl, that uh, uh, cause I put flee and run. Um, I think it had to do with that. Anything that is not holy that we need to flee and run mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got that in big letters. I don't, <laughs> I don't, and I don't know what, um, and I got Romans six, six and seven. 
and then 12. And I, I don't know if they correlate to that flea and run that I wrote down. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I don't see any comments on Facebook. But if you ladies have anything on Facebook, go ahead and put it in now before we end. Um, amen, amen, amen. Okay, excellent. Any other comments? Thank you, Pamela. Any other comments? It's just uh, thanking you, Robert and Cheryl, um, relating to Clarice's statement and that and yours and uh, Pastor Locke's. It's again, it's you know, why are you doing that? Are you doing it because in your spirit it's an act of holiness and reverence, or is it to be seen? And mm -hmm. like? mm -hmm. You know, again, don't do it just for looks. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if we look back, this is 2021, and we're going mm -hmm. into 2022. And you and say we're going into the year 2023, and you are still at a place in your prayer life, in your uh, relationship with God at the same place. Be concerned. Mm -hmm. Be concerned because we until the day we die, we should consistently be trying and striving for growth in our relationship with God. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that's all I have for tonight, ladies. Um, again, just watch for the announcements of what we're going to be doing for Women's Bible Study next year, who your teacher will be. And um, we will continue. And of course, I'll be back with like special classes. Of course, I'm sure Christian education will allow me to do some special classes on special series from time to time. So I'll be doing that. But it has been an honor to be your uh, women's Bible study teacher. I have learned so much from you guys. I have grown so much. Um, I have just fallen in love with every single one of you. I want to thank those who, who are, are not members that and you have been so diligent and consistent in, the, in our Bible studies on Wednesdays. Uh, for those of you who are not members, and I appreciate you and I love you. And please continue. Please continue in your studies and your prayer prayers. Um, please con continue in reading the word of God every day and understanding that you have been set apart. Yes, you are special. You are special. You have been set apart to serve the living God, to be an example to the world, to be a light in this world. And you do not have um, the convenience, the convenience of making choices on what day you're going to serve God and what day you're not going to serve God. Because you've been set apart, you've been chosen, and you have already been bought <laughs> at a price. And you belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Everyone have a fantastic Christmas, New Year's, and remember, keep your mask on, even if you if you're with family. It's the family mm -hmm. members giving everybody COVID. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're right about that. Okay, thank you, everyone. I love Bye. you guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye. Good night.